podcast show with Tamla Coleman. We pray that you will be inspired, blessed, and encouraged by what you hear weekly as you tune into Amazing Grace on the Faith Broadcast. Now your host, Tamla Coleman. Thank you for tuning in to Amazing Grace with Tamala Coleman. I am truly, truly happy to have you listening to the show this evening. I thank God for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amazing Grace is about encouraging, inspiring, through testimonies, relationships, and most importantly, the love of God. I am so excited to bring on special guests to speak about their trials, their struggles, their deliverance, and their breakthroughs and informative topics. I am truly, truly honored to bring shows that will change, inspire, and motivate you each and every week. Well, listeners, I have a special guest with me this evening. She is a beautiful woman of God in whom I am pleased and delighted to have with me on tonight. She is the author of Spiritual and Broke, How to Stop Struggling with Money and Live Your Purpose. My, my. Wow, I hope you all are ready to hear how she overcame obstacles in her life. Get ready, get ready for your breakthrough on tonight. I can't wait to hear this awesome woman's story. So without further ado, allow me to introduce my guest for the evening, Miss Jennifer Noel Taylor. How are you doing, Miss Taylor? Hey, well, great. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm having a great day. So I am so excited to have you with me, Miss Taylor, and I love to go by first name. So are you okay with me calling you Jennifer? Yes, great. Awesome. Awesome, mm-hmm. awesome, Jennifer. I tell you, wow, the title of your book, it is a very catchy. And I tell you, because of so many of us go through life spiritual but broke, but as we know, God will deliver us from all of our brokenness, including our financial brokenness. So I just want to just thank you for your vision behind your book, and I can't wait to hear all about it. But before we go into that, tell us a little about who Miss Taylor is. Hmm. Well, that's a great question. So um, just a little bit of background. I uh, graduated from Cal Poly with a degree in computer science. I started writing software, realized that just wasn't the path for me, and I felt depressed at my job and praying, praying to God for my life path to be revealed to me. I went to massage school and got into body work and discovered through that energy medicine. And uh, I uh, went through a series of, of synchronicities. I followed my, my heart and ended up now uh, running a business called Quantum Touch where we teach people energy medicine around the world. And I've been doing that the last 17 years. I absolutely love what I do for a living. It's just amazing. I love helping people, helping people reclaim their power around disease and and their problems. And it's just, it's just been an amazing journey. So that's uh, my life in a, in a very short nutshell. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I just picked up on you love what you do and how, you know, there are a lot of people that go every day that don't love what they do. And, you know, I have to really kind of talk to myself about that because, you know, I have an eight, a eight to five job as well. And I sometimes like, oh, my goodness, I have a passion for this guy. I have a passion for that, you know, but I'm doing something I really don't really like to do. But, you know, God will continue to, you know, once we kind of just kind of just flow with it and then just continue to just pray and ask God, you know, God, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing with my life? You know, because I don't want to, you know, go through my life being, you know, just living a a spiritual life and then broke too. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, we can kind of, you know, the those they're, they're two different things. So I want you to share with us how 
you began to write your book about spiritual broke and how to stop struggling with money and live your purpose because I know that's a story behind a story. You have a story to share because most of the time when we are encouraging, inspiring people and we have we, we put in out books and I'm an author as well and I know when I actually put out a book, it's something that I've been through. So I know that you've been through something. Share with us how this all came to came to be. Well, I do have a story. Um, So what I noticed is when I started doing energy medicine and I followed my heart, I was under the impression that if I do what I love, the money would would automatically come. Mm. And what I discovered was that I was doing what I love and the money wasn't showing up. I Mm. I ended up uh, with $35,000 of credit card debt, unsecured. I borrowed $100,000 for my business uh, just to keep payroll moving along and and pay our expenses. I had a a mortgage that was underwater. I always felt like I was barely making it. So I had all this debt. I had negative net worth of over $135,000. And... I just didn't know why the money wasn't showing up and I was angry about it. I felt betrayed by God because I thought, look, I'm doing your work. I'm I'm doing what I love. Why, why am I, why am I not supported? What's going on here? So that was the origin of, of the problem that I've been addressing in my book is why are so many people, I wasn't alone in this, why are so many people out there doing what they love and, and yet they're, they're living on someone's couch or they're just struggling? And, and I thought, well, well, what's going on here? So that's really the starting point of my book. And I wanted to help others turn this around and, and do what you love, what you're passionate about, and also be financially supported. You know that I know that a lot of people listening, including myself, (laughs) we all have passions and we have these things that we love to do. And like you said, the money was not coming. So let us know, kind of give us a little bit about uh, the steps, because I was reading about your you have some like intro questions and also that you pose in your book. Uh, First, you ask the question, are you spiritual and broke? Then Mm -hmm. secondly, you ask the question, are you doing what you love yet? struggling with money, as you just said. And then thirdly, are you feeling frustrated with the law of attraction? So before we go into the law of attraction, so I do want to talk about that as well, just kind of give us a little some steps that you took. What were the steps that you took in order to achieve doing what you love, what you had a passion for, and then also seeing the, the manifestation of the, the money or, you know, at least seeing something from doing what you love? It actually, the biggest step was a wake-up call. Mm. And the, the story is, is really dark, but I, I use it to illustrate that we can turn really dark moments into an amazing life, that we can take our lowest point in life and, and turn it around. I wanted to inspire people that that is possible. And, and what happened was I went to bed one night, like we all do, and a man broke into my house in the middle of the night. And 3.30 in the morning, he came in through a window. I didn't know that a man had broken into my house. I was fast asleep. Comes into my bedroom, and it turned into a uh, sexual assault and a robbery. Wow. Can't get any lower than this. This is, this is the most terrifying, you know, day, night of my life. So I called 911. And the whole house gets filled with law enforcement. And as part of this whole investigation, the law enforcement needs to take me to the rape trauma center at at a hospital. So they lead me out. At this point, it's about 6 in the morning. They lead me out to their police car. They, they, They offer me a seat in the back. So now I am where all the criminals have been in the past. It's kind of an eerie feeling back there. And I was sitting there, and I was just, thinking like this is this is horrendous like how could god allow this to happen i i, I was in shock 
And this is where the wake-up call happened. Over the radio, one of the officers said, we are now transporting the victim to the rape trauma center. When, when he said that word victim, something inside me just, just broke because in my mind, I was a spiritual leader. I was teaching people the law of attraction. I was teaching people empowerment. I was trying to be a representation of what I was teaching. And yet, through another person's eyes, I was being labeled a victim. And despite my level of pain and misery and suffering at that moment, I thought, how dare you call me a victim? I'm not a victim. This is horrendous that someone's even viewing me like this. This is so not my life right now. This is just so wrong. And then that's when my wake-up call happened because I realized that I was living my life as a victim. In my mind, I viewed myself a victim to my money. I was a victim to men, unavailable men. I had this victim script just, just running rampant, and it was ruling my life. And that victim consciousness is the antithesis of abundance. If, if you're projecting victim consciousness into your reality, you can't attract money or, or, or good or, you know, good relationships or anything, really, you're going to attract more things that make you feel like a victim. So when I had that wake-up call, I realized i got to put this victim script to bed. That, this has to stop, almost like that, that low point where somebody realizes the alcohol addiction has to end. It was that low point. And, and from there, I started to, to dig myself out of my hole, and I started to shift my, my awareness from, Let's take back my power here and, and, and eliminate the victim consciousness. So that was actually the first step is to realize that we're not victims. Nobody is a victim to anything, that you can reclaim your power and, and you can take back your power and you have the ability to turn whatever it is in your life around if you're willing to, to claim your power and, and work with it. That's step number one. Wow. And I tell you, and it's all like a, it's, it's more like when you think, whatever you think about, you know, because it's like a mind change because you have to shift, do a shift in your mind, your thinking. And, of course, that was pro- probably a lot of what was going on with you as well. And I can't even imagine what you were going through on that night. And to really, like you said, a light bulb, you know, it was like that's when it really hit you. Like, I am not a victim. And you know how many people think like that as well, but they don't change that. They don't change it. They don't turn it off. But then we have to know that we can achieve greatness and all the things that God has for us if we would just shift our thinking. And then when you talk about the attraction, many, many times, you know, sometimes we seem to attract the same types of things, the same types of friends, the same types of relationships, you know, <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. it just, mm-hmm. those things happen, but you have to decide, I'm going to make a change. Something has to change about this situation or this circumstance because I deserve better. And you knew that you deser- deserved better and you wanted to live a life of, of abundance. And that's what I want our listeners to know that they can live a life of abundance, you know, not just being spiritual, but we are supposed to be at least spiritual and living in abundance, but not spiritual and broke, you know, but we have to understand the difference. So when we talk about the law of attraction, what can you share with us about this well-known statement? Because we've heard it. If you do what you love, the money will come. And, and this is one of the things you stated <laughs> to as well. If you do what you love, the money will come. Really? And I love that. I was like, wow. Because we have heard of it, and, and we're guilty, and I'm guilty of it. Even staying in my own life, I'm guilty of saying the same thing. Where if I just, you know, I, I, all this other stuff is going to come. But then you're like, wait a minute, something's not changing. I'm I'm doing what I love, but I'm not really manifesting really what I'm going to get out of this. Kind of share with us how the law of attraction really works and how it works for you. So doing what you love is awesome, and I think it's part of it. Mm-hmm. And it's necessary, but not sufficient. Mm-hmm. So when you're, you're doing what you love, if, if you're waiting 
for the money to come. If you're waiting for, for God just to give you money, that, that doesn't work. I don't know if you know the, the parable of the, the story of the drowning man who was drowning and uh, God sent a helicopter to warn him to get out of the flood and then God sent a boat and then God sent a rescuer and, and all this stuff and this man drowned mm-hmm. and, sa- and he went to heaven and he said, God, why didn't you save me? And God said, well, I sent a boat, you know, I sent an air, a helicopter, I sent a rescuer. Why didn't you, you know, take action? And that's really what I feel is going on a lot of the time is that if you're doing what you love, it doesn't mean that you can just sit around on the couch and, and wait for the money to come. It's like you need to meet spirit or, or God halfway along this journey. You know, God sends a helicopter or an opportunity to create money being willing to be open to these opportunities that show up no matter what they look like, you know, cause it's not God sticking a hand in, in your world with a hundred, you know, a handful of hundred dollar bills. And I was making that mistake of just waiting, waiting for the money to, to come and, and not really taking action in the direction that would actually help me manifest money. And these opportunities I feel like are always around us to turn what we're doing into a greater level of abundance, it's being able to recognize them. And uh, part of that is, is realizing that taking taking action is, is really important. So that's, that's step number one. And that's also linked to being a victim. You know, once you get out of that victim consciousness, I feel like people are more willing to take action in the direction of creating abundance. You know what, as you were talking, I was thinking about a lot of people don't. They love, they're doing what they love. They have a passion for it, they're, and they're really gifted and talented at it. But then, you know, fear. I, I was thinking about fear um, as well because that is also something that keeps people from really um, thrusting out and networking because there's so many things out there, so many opportunities. You know, social media has so many people, you know, that are doing this and doing that, and they have, you know, they're, in connections, but um, a lot of times the fear comes in because, for, uh, first of all, we want to be careful with all types of different opportunities that may appear to be trustworthy, but they're really not. But you know, I, I did. You, was it a, a matter of fear at at one time or another with you, as far as trying to really step out and really kind of do the secondary thing that you had to do, other than just doing what you love? Did fear fear step in for you? Did it kind of you know take any kind of um, seat with you at any time? I feel like there's two blocks to earning more money for people. One is, as you say, fear, fear to to take action, fear that you're going to fail, fear that somebody's going to ridicule you or or give you a one star review on your book or or whatever that is. The second one is self worth, and those seem to be kind of tied into each other. You know. The self-worth thing, thinking I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, my book sucks, uh, you know, I'm not Elizabeth Gilbert, she wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Just that that negative script that, that gets in the way, I'm too fat to be a public speaker, whatever that story is that's going on, I feel like that also interferes, So and it feeds into the fear, because that feeling of I'm not good enough, I'm afraid, to, to get out there because I don't feel good enough or I feel like a sham. See how that all feeds into each other. So I feel like self-worth stuff is something that is really important to look at and to process. And it was it's one of the chapters of my book. I, I have a whole chapter about self-worth and how to move beyond the self-worth stuff so that you can achieve your goals, dreams, and desires. So definitely, as you say, fear is a factor as well as self-worth. Awesome, awesome. And sometimes also... We can also, Jennifer, we can also talk our own selves, <laughs> you know. We can also talk our own selves out of, you know, thrusting ourselves out there, just walking out on faith. And, you know, like you said before, sometimes we don't have that self-worth about ourselves. And then, you know, we don't have anybody patting us on the back. But you know what? I, what I've, I've noticed about myself in just years past and even now, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm getting a pat on the back from anyone as long as I love myself and I know that I am worthy, and God 
sees that he sees me as worthy, then I know that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So I try to just, you know, pat myself on the back. You know, I do um, daily affirmations. You know, that's one thing um, to kind of just build your self-worth. You know, speak those things and be not into your life and stand in the mirror and just speak good things about yourself, you know, that you see. And even if you don't think it's, it's real, you know, speak it anyway because our words have power. And so I'm so, my goodness, I'm just so excited about what you're doing because a lot of people – feeling the same way they're going they've been in debt they've gone through all these different changes and challenges in their lives and they feel like there's there's a dead end but there is life and you speak spoke that in the beginning that even when it looks dead or when you know it looks like it's not gonna you know things are not working out right there's always some light at the end of the tunnel so i thank you so much jennifer for that so before we we actually end the show i do want you to encourage our our listeners because there's so many people that need to be encouraged on how to just know that they can live an abundant life that they don't have to live this life and just just trying to make ends meet give us a little inspiration encouraging words this evening well i feel that it's never hopeless that feeling of hopelessness is it's never hopeless any situation can be turned around any situation can be resolved. You can go from where you are now to wherever you want to be, and it's it's possible. It's you you can do it. Just you know, to, if you reclaim your power, and that's really what my fundamental message is: is no matter how bad it seems, no matter how hopeless it appears, uh, you you have the power to turn it around and, and turn these dark moments into into light. And I want to encourage people to really tap into their their ability and power to do so. You know, one of my favorite speakers said, uh, you know, one of the things that successful people do is they recognize the fact that sometimes life is just not fair. Mm. That's just the nature of life sometimes. You know, people are born into different situations. People have different physical health and, and things like that. But the thing that separates successful people from non-successful people is the idea that even though life is not fair, you can still win you can still achieve your dreams no matter where you are right now. So that's really, I want to encourage people to, to really claim that for themselves and step into your power and realize it is possible. Amen. Amen. I tell you so much. I've been encouraged. I tell you, you've really taught me something this evening to, to just tap into my self-worth. And I know our listeners are so, whoever's listening tonight, I hope that you have heard something tonight because this has been truly um, amazing um, information. And just know that, listeners, that you are a worthy. God sees that you're worthy. And like my guest has said, reclaim. You have to reclaim your power. And I tell you, nothing's impossible. You know, any situation, as you also said, any situation can be turned around, and that's definitely true. So, Miss Jennifer, I do want our listeners to know where they can purchase your book, Spiritual and Broke. Um, let us know any of the social media outlets you're also associated with so our listeners can keep in contact with you and to purchase your book. Great. Well, my book is on Amazon. It's under Spiritual and Broke, so Amazon.com. And uh, just look up Spiritual and Broke. I also have a website, and on my website are all the links to my social media. And my website link is spiritualandbroke.com. So, and on my website, I'm also giving away the first three chapters of my book for free. So you can sign up for my mailing list, and you get a free uh, preview of the book to see if you resonate with it. So, again, that's spiritualandbroke.com, or you can buy the book on Amazon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And listeners, I have also read some inserts of this book, and it's amazing. You have to purchase this book. Go and purchase this book by Jennifer Noel Taylor. I tell you, this is amazing, and you all will benefit greatly from this book as well, and I'm sure that you will be able to to read this book and not put it down, (laughs) and not put it down. So, Jennifer, are you working on any any other books or any projects that you're, you're doing in the future? What's going on with you coming up? I have a bunch of projects going on. So one of my most exciting projects right now is I'm building a house in uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. I just finished the design. I hired an architect, and it's a 
I'm just really looking forward to seeing this go up next year. Um, I'm working on a webinar um, on this topic of spiritual and broke where I'm off, I'm going to be offering exercises people can do to, you know, like homework. It's, it's a six week webinar. And then in between we'll have homework because I want to help people actually take what I talk about in my book and, and turn it into reality. So I'm, I'm formulating that right now. And um, I'm contemplating a children's book. So I'm, I have a few bunch of projects, you know, up my sleeve right now. Awesome, awesome. That is amazing. You said you're building a house. Oh, my God, look at God. Oh, that's amazing. And you have to let me know how it's going. Keep in touch. Let me know how everything is going with that. And if you have any other books that's coming up, I do want to share that on another show. Maybe I can bring you back with me on another show, and we can share whatever you have going on. And also, listeners, a webinar. Um, Let us know when your webinar is going to start. Do you have that already set up or um, not yet. I'm working on a like a pilot program first. Just I'm gonna have a kind of a launch it with uh, some people just to continue development. So it's just in development right now. Awesome, but I'll let awesome. you know. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So listeners, if you're keeping in touch with Miss Jennifer uh, Noel Taylor, she will have all the information I'm sure on her social media as it comes. And then you, I will. Act, I tell you. I may be even be in that webinar, Jennifer, because this is amazing. You have really, really, truly blessed me on tonight. And I just praise God for you, and I may God just continue to bless you and keep you and keep doing what you're doing, keep inspiring, keep encouraging, and keep giving them informative information and letting people know that they are they are worthy, and that's what we need to know. And I thank you so much for being with me on tonight. You have truly blessed me, and I know that my listeners have also been blessed. Praise God for an awesome show on tonight. Wow, I have been so blessed tonight, and I pray that someone out there listening has received or you have received a blessing on tonight and you heard something that you needed to hear. Thank you to my guest, Miss Jennifer Noel Taylor, for being with me on tonight, and I pray blessings over your life, woman of God. As I always say on this show, remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. As God loves us, we have been commanded to love one another. Thanks again for tuning in to Amazing Grace with Tamala Coleman. Tune in next week to Faith Broadcasting for yet another great, inspiring show. Until next time, everyone have a good night and God bless.